Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. So glad that you're here today. We are going to do two very spooky Halloween cards. So in one of my last videos, I made this really sweet ghost shaker card. And this was so fun. This was done um, with my Cricut. I came up with a couple more ideas for Halloween cards in case you are someone who likes to send those. I will be putting the design space link down in the description. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, for my first card, it is going to be an A2 size top folding card. I already have my little Halloween sticker already on the back on the bottom. So what I did is I took, this is a 110 pound cardstock. It is actually a textured cardstock. So I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's got a texture to it. And what I did is I took my blending brushes and the first thing is uh, all over, I blended out the old paper color of my distressed ink. Then I went around some of the perimeter with some shaded lilac to bring in a different color dimension, a little bit in the middle here. And then I went around the perimeter again, this time with my black soot. And then I looked at it and I thought it needs something before we move on. So I brought in the seedless preserves and I just have a few places here and there where um, it needed something. So I blended in some seedless preserves and this is the final result. Now this is like 65 pound um, cardstock and I used my Cricut to spell out spooky. Then I thought, well, I could build up some dimension and put that here. I bought this from scrapbook.com as well. These are really cute little patterns. I just think they're fun. But here at the very back, well, let me show you these. We have skeletons, we have eyes. These make me think of Scooby-Doo where it would have the eyes pop out at you um, and then the bats would come out toward you, toward the screen. We have some, we have some spooky spiders and on the other side of the spooky spiders, we have spider webs. We have some gold and some um, ghosts. Now I thought, well, that could be cute, but I did already just do a ghost card. So I wanted to do something a little different. And then we have the plaid and the other side of the plaid is a candy corn mix. Um, we have orange, cute little pumpkin mix. That wouldn't be too bad either. They do have, let's see, we have one that says spooky. I liked it, but I didn't like how it looked through the letters. Some moons and stars. I love this. This is fun. I really like that. But I felt like the white got lost in here. So this just, it just got lost. So I don't know, I'll have to come up with something else for that one. How fun, this one here, I definitely have some ideas for this one. And now I know, I really can't sit here and make 400 Halloween cards. Halloween is like, you know, a little over a month away. Here's pink, and then this little spooky um, scene here. I thought about something like that. Settled on this toward the very back. And so my thought was that I would layer these. I, I thought that would be pretty awesome. Okay, so let's see. This is um, two and three quarters wide. Oh, move that one out of the way. And it is almost five and a quarter tall. All right, so if I did a little less than two and three quarters, there's three quarters. Okay. Right. And then a little less, or a little bit more than five, less than five and a quarter. I'm gonna see how that looks. And then we would layer this like so, and then 
that way to go on there. Right. So the first thing that I want to do is go bring in all of these and my liquid glue, I think, yeah, I think liquid glue will be good. And I'm going to just glue these panels together. I'm actually quite excited um, about the holidays this year because we will be moving, which will be um, stressful and fun all at the same time. But it will be nice to be in a new place before um, Christmas. My daughter was so cute. She was like, Mom, it'll be like in the movies, you know, where they wake up on Christmas and they actually like go down the stairs. It was so cute. She is very excited. I am excited about the laundry room. It has a counter. It has space underneath it. It's just a really neat place. Okay, so this is my spooky. It's just layered, just a little bit of dimension. Is I'm gonna go around the perimeter of these eyes. I'm just putting glue here on the middle pieces that will, you know, be touching this spooky part. And then bring this over. All right. So we're going to line this up. Okay, I think that is I think that is good. Perfect. I have a little acrylic block and I'm just going to put that on there for a moment. I'm just going to set that to the side. Then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and cut this down just a little bit. Um, mostly on the sides because this element is almost five and a quarter, so I really don't want, um, I don't want to bring it down too much from the top to the bottom. I do have to get rid of that little piece there. And let's see, so four and a quarter wide, and we're at two and a half, let's see, four and a quarter wide, let's do four, um, well, let's take off an eighth of an inch on each side. Okay. So the big thought is that I was thinking that I would get this centered like that. And then, whoop, this is why I usually bring in something to hold my card paper. Okay, so like this, and my next thought would be like that. I'm going to bring back in my Misty to help hold this paper. You certainly could just tape this down on your work surface. I think that we will put it about right there. All right. So just a little shy of five and a quarter. So this particular foam tape is from Hobby Lobby and I'm just gonna put that down here in the back and I do need to maybe shorten it a little so let me do that super fast. You add, um, when you add foam tape, you know, and you add dimension to your cards, be very mindful that you actually might have to use the non-machinable postage stamp. It looks like a very big, beautiful butterfly. And, um, okay, I can see this side just a little bit. And it's, so it's definitely, you know, more expensive, but it will save your creations from getting destroyed and it will make sure that it gets to your recipients. All right, I don't see anything hanging off those edges there. I usually keep a few of those on hand and I honestly don't know if they went up since the postage has gone up. Could not tell you that, but I can tell you that it is handy. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this piece of tape. Well, maybe not. <laughs> oh goodness. Use that piece of tape. And I just want to put this down here so that I can just see where I'm putting things. And 
And then this seems a little overkill, but this liquid glue will give me just a few extra seconds to make sure I get this in the right place. Because once you put this tape down, it's not going to give. All right. So I've got it left and right. Perfect. So how about up and down? Okay. I think that's good. I'm just going to press that down on there. Perfect. And then that'll just lift right back up. Okay. I'm going to move that back out of the way. Now, for the rest of the card, um, going with these, these eyes that are staring at us like they're coming out of a, a vintage Scooby-Doo um, cartoon, I have a Lawn Fawn die where it cuts out candy corn and bats, and so I thought it would be really neat to layer some bats and then have them kind of hang off like that and so we would put a foam dot over there and not on this side so that is what we are going to do now let me grab my tweezers and we're going to get these bats we're going to get these bats layered these are the cutest little stamps I mean die cuts well it does come with stamps but I am not stamping today. I am simply, I think I am missing one bat. Could have sworn that I made a total of six, but that's okay. We will, um, we'll just adjust. Very nice. And yeah, this is just a singular bat. So I don't know where the other one went. But while I have this out in front of me, I'm going to go ahead and find, I'm going to go ahead and find, like, for instance, this is the P, okay? We need the O's. So we'll have one here and one there. And then the question is, do we need the dimension? We need to have them layered because I already have these little pieces and I might as well use them. And then we will do something different another day with all of these, all of these letters that have come out of the cardstock. So this was a cute little design over in Design Space. All right, I'm gonna move those out of the way. Okay, and then let's go ahead and get these layered down. A little bit of glue. Oh, I already have the O's here. I'll just do those while we're while we're there. Perfect. Yeah, these these little these little eyes. Oh my gosh, they're just so fun. And I don't know about you, but I well, I like all kinds of Halloween. Like. I'm not opposed to scary, you know, we, we do watch some scary movies together, so I'm okay with that, um, but I do like cute Halloween also, I guess it just depends on what's, you know, what it, what the purpose is, so let me know down in the comments, are you someone who likes, like, a cute, fun Halloween, do you like spooky horror kind of Halloween or a little bit of both. Maybe you are someone who likes both. This is going to actually be quite cute. Okay, so I'm going to let that just hang for a second. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bats and I'm going to put them here on this panel. I am going to grab some little foam dots. These are also from Hobby Lobby. They're just like a nice big pack. Is that Look at that, that dimension right here is perfect. It's like the same size. I want one bat to hang off over here and the other double bat, I guess it can hang over this way. 
And I'm not worried about them hanging off of these edges because of, we have still the card base. And that's okay if they interact with that. Oh, I like that better actually. I think I'm going to put it not here, but maybe right there. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Let's see. So on this particular wing, is that going to be plenty? That will be plenty. And then over here on this side, right there, that will be plenty. And no, no foam dots over there. So then, and I'm just going to put glue on this side. And if there's any glue that isn't touched, like if it's it's touching the white part, it's going to catch, and then when it's not touching the white part, it will end up drying. I think we're going to go like that. That looks good. And then this wing won't be dipping down. It'll stay flush with the, this little panel here. And we'll take this off. Oh, did I just find my other bat? <laughs> I think I just found my other bat. They were all stuck together. Okay. I, I knew that I had six bats. Okay, that makes me feel better. That's funny. That is really funny. I'm just going to pick up this bat and get it all on there. Okay, so this bat will not get any dimension. It'll be over there. It is a double bat. This one is now a double bat. I knew I would find it at some point. I am so glad that I found it before I put the card completely together. So I like these little these little dots. I got a pack at Hobby Lobby. It was like $4.99, I think, and it was it's all different sizes. But um, I happened to be at Hobby Lobby. I needed some and I was there. They were there, so I just picked them up. And so far I'm quite pleased with them. Okay, last set of bats, and then we're gonna put this on the card panel. I mean the card base. This is the card panel. Alright. So here is our card panel. And that that actually looks that looks pretty good now. Now that it's all together and the bats are on there, that looks I'm actually really pleased with that. Um, even as I was creating this with you here on camera, I was not a hundred percent sold on my choices. But I'm very pleased with how that turned out. Let's bring this back in. And I don't think I'm going to add any dimension back here because this is already dimension. I'm going to put my, my card base down. So here's the card. It's A2, four and a half by five, and, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. So it opens up like this. How cute. Oh, we should color that pumpkin. Let, well, let's think about that for a moment. So what I love about my Misty is that I literally can just unfold. I can still have the card base front just like that, but now I can work with that. And this is going to go like right there. So I'm not going to use any foam tape on the back of this panel, but I am going to use just this double-sided tape here. And I'll just get or these little stripes on here. Do you have a specific um, double-sided adhesive that you like to use or you kind of like me where you've tried several and they all seem to do fairly well so you just kind of go with whatever it is that you're getting that day. Okay, so this gray panel is the same size, same height. So I'm really just gonna line that up from side to side and then have that go down. Oh, this is looking so cute. I love it. This is our finished spooky card. And again, you know, this was all, I made all of this. This um, spooky panel was done with my Cricut and just some paper that I happen to have on hand. I did use my Lawn Fawn die for the bats, but you could totally use bats from Design Space. And um, in fact, I can find some bats in Design Space and put them in there for you in the Design Space file. And when I link that down in the description, you'll have access to bats as well. Okay, I did decide that two things. The front of this card needs a little bit of shine and sparkle. 
So I brought out my iridescent sequin and I'm, I'm really just going to pick a couple here and there and put them in a couple of places on the card. Three on that side, right there, a couple over here. So there we go. So it just gives it a little something extra. So nothing extravagant, nothing to take away from where it already is, which is super cute. Our first spooky version of our cards. And I'm actually going to do another spooky card, a little bit different techniques, and then we can compare them and see which one is our favorite. Okay, for our next card, I'm actually going to turn the A2 size top fold, but I'm gonna make it landscape. So I have an eight and a half uh, wide piece of paper. I cut it at five and a half, so it would only be half of the paper. And then I folded this in half and scored it with my bone folder. Okay, so for the next part of our card, this is 110 pound cardstock that I have actually already done uh, the ink blending on. I have used the black soot, the seedless preserved, and the shaded lilac. And again, I started out with the the this Priscilla's preserves, the more purpley purple. And then I went around the perimeter mostly with the shaded lilac. And then I brought in a little bit of the black soot. So it kind of gives it that swirly, smoky Halloween vibe to it. I found this. This is a um, cling stamp. I thought this would be really fun to put a spider web on the front of this. And I'm going to bring in my larger Misty. Okay. And with the larger Misty, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take our clean stamp and we're gonna put it down here in this corner. It's a lot heavier than a clear polymer stamp. And so really and truly, it it is not probably a, not a good idea to put it on the door. So I'm gonna be using my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And basically, I really am just going to ink up this entire stamp. I probably should have decided where I wanna put my paper and then attach that to the door. Let me grab some washi tape. I'm gonna put that on the back of this paper and I have that white part up at the top. I'm gonna hold this here. All right, so because it's a spider web, and quite frankly, it really doesn't matter if it's lined up 100% perfect. I'm gonna put that there, because I am gonna be cutting down the panel, so that'll get the bulk of that. I'll let that sit a little too long. Let me ink this up just for good measure. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this down like this. And then we're just gonna press this down in here, okay? And look at that. I don't even, we don't even need to do that twice. That turned out amazing. Well, actually it did, but I do think, like right along in here, just right there ever so. So I think I am gonna ink that up one more time. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have fun with spiderweb. All right. Oh, that is much better. So much better. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off very gently because I don't want to curl my card. Okay, so there is our spooky, spooky panel. Okay, so the next thing, I'm going to use this little, kind of like a little tacky mat that I got. I'm going to put down some mint tape right here on my spooky. Okay. So this is the spooky that I cut out with my Cricut. And this is the same font as the last card. And I'm going to use this to help me get these um, all put back in here. Now before we glue this back in here, I am going to make some little slits so that when I am 
taking this off, it will be easy because it'll just kind of, they'll just kind of tear away. So here are my little spooky letters. What I'm going to do is I am going to place the first round of letters down in here. Our K is going to go back in there. So the purpose of doing this in this particular manner is that all of my all of my letters will be lined up the way they need to be lined up in relation to each other. It'll just make it so much easier. And then we'll be putting this down on our card on our panel on the front. This is probably the longest part. But that's what we did here on this last card. I did the same thing and then I was able just to put that right down almost like almost kind of like using transfer tape I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on these letters and then when we place down these letters everything will line up perfectly and I'm just gonna do one at a time really the hardest part of this is just making sure that your letters are going in the right orientation. But other than that, everything is good. And this green mint tape is perfect because it is so low tack, it won't stick to my letters. So that's good. What we're doing is we're just building up that dimension. I'm glad that I got these laid out because that would have been hard not to have them laid out and just, you know, dragging them out of the little bowl. Now you certainly could put these down on the front of the card and build them up that way. Um, I just, I like this method because I like having, um, at least for me, I like knowing that everything is lined up pretty um, correctly, so to speak. And now I'm just gonna go through we're gonna lift away. Well, if I cut through it all the way, it'll work really good. It's gonna lift this up really carefully around our letters. And having the the cuts in the cardstock allows for folding and manipulating this to come up without having to move anything. And it just works so much better. The cuts make all the difference because you can, you're kind of like tearing it away from around your letters. So now my spooky is all perfectly lined up the way I want it to be. So what we have here is, I think I'm going to cut this down because on this panel, we're going to have some bats. We're going to have some spiders. There we go. We were going to have spider webs. That was going to be part of the, the front design. However, having that, having that stamp, that is going to be awesome. So that's what's going to happen. So before that happens, we actually, we want to stack up our elements. For instance, here are, here's my spider and and then we're just going to lay that spider on top of that one. There's one. And then this little spider lost his legs earlier. So I'm going to use, I'm going to put him on the very back. Now when I get all of these together and they're dry and ready to go, I'll just go along the edge of these with a black alcohol marker. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if you look, to the side you can see the white but if I go along the edge with one of my black alcohol markers you would never know. Got some spooky little spiders going on. I'll just stick those under my little block. Okay and then we have these bats. Bats are kind of the same and these were all in design space. They were part of this um, image that I have so again when I Oop, that goes over there. When I link it this for you, you'll have access to the bats, which you can use on the previous card if you don't have, you know, the lawn fawn 
that die. Right? So we're going to get these glued together. Okay, so we have two spiders and three sets of bats, and I'm just going to let those hang out for a second. And the next thing I want to do is I want to cut this down. So this is an A2 size, and this right here is a little bit bigger than A2. I'm just going to cut that down with my paper trimmer. And I think for this card, I, I literally am just going to make it the same size as the card front. So this is five and a half. And then we need four and a quarter, but check it out, it is four and a quarter, so I don't need to make any more cuts. That is fantastic. Now that is perfect. Okay, bring it back in my little, my little grip. I have these leftover spider webs from earlier. And I'm thinking these would look kind of cool in here, just on the inside of the card, in the corner. <laughs> like, sit right there, and I can just cut off that edge. There's one. And we'll do one down here. Bottom corner. These are cute little spider webs. I love these. And we'll do one more at the top. And then I will cut off where they hang over the edge. And we'll just let all that hang out while we assemble the rest of the card. Okay, I'm going to pull that up. And then I'm just going to go along this edge here. here and here. Perfect. And then these little these little doodads can just hang out for a minute while we take care of the rest of the card. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold each of these little doodads with my tweezers and then I'm just using my little alcohol marker to just brush along the edges to kind of take care of any white that might be showing through on the edge. And it just ensures that you um, have, you know, cohesiveness. And also if you do sentiments with um, colored cardstock and you find the same thing happening, you can just literally take a marker that is the color or close to the color of your cardstock and do the same thing then nobody would know. It's the coolest little tip that I've learned. Okay, so I think now we are ready to assemble the card. So I'm going to bring in this panel. I'm just going to let that sit on top of here. And then we are going to put on the spooky. We'll go on top of there and then we're going to add these little elements up there. So let's go ahead, again, use my liquid glue. Definitely using a lot of liquid glue today, but that is okay. Sometimes that is what is needed. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out where I want to. Let's see, let's make sure that's kind of on some lines. It can go right there in the middle. Okay, well, let's hope that I did that well because I really need to buy one of those T-square rulers. Okay, so take a look at this. Whoop, I'll need to put some more glue on that one probably. So this mint tape is so low tack, it's almost like a post-it note. So I'm just very carefully going along and pulling it off the top of my letters and pushing them down. Hopefully I used enough glue. <gasps> Look at that! Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That is so fantastic. 
Okay, so that that worked out really, really well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place all of these little spider friends. Get this guy. He is going to go underneath our K. All right. So he's going to go like nice and down on that web. Then I'm going to put the other tiny little spider. We're going to put that, this little guy, underneath the P. So, you know, cards. I don't know if you make a lot of cards. I kind of go back and forth. I like card making. I think I like it because I have a lot of paper. I have a Cricut. I do have a manual die cutting machine. Like, it's almost like its own little tiny canvas. And I don't know. I just feel like... Like I don't have to have special wood or paint or whatever, so I really like it. But I really like my vinyl crafts too. So, are you? Do you like making cards? Do you, or do are you strictly Cricut vinyl projects? I like to branch out. I think it's fun just to try new things. And coming to the end, we're gonna be putting this together. This is gonna be so cute. Okay. Now the cool part is you can see the dimension. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my Mini Misty one more time, and I'm not gonna really worry too much about the orientation, because I wanna use this more like getting everything lined up. I'm just gonna put that tape from earlier, tiny little piece on the inside, just to keep it closed and then this will go I'm just going to use this to line it all up in the corner it'll be nice and easy and for this particular part I think I will use my dot runner I'm just going to kind of give it a really good amount I do know that I am definitely someone who uses a lot of adhesive I'm okay with that get these corners here just to give it a little float time while I get that on there. Here we go. I'm going to get that put in place. Pull that up off of there. Okay, don't need that anymore. Bring that out of the way. We don't need the misty anymore. And then there is our card. Awesome. Okay, well, we got to top this off a little bit of a little bit of shine and put a couple down here, kind of like that. And put some down like that and we can put a couple up over here, one or two over here. I think I'm going to put the tiny ones right here in the middle of each web. These two just kind of over here. Okay. So this is our spooky card. Oh, that turned out so good. I love it. Okay, I'm going to bring back in the other card and we can then decide which one is our favorite. Okay, these are the two cards that were made in this video. So we have well, we had this one first, and I used the eyes behind the pattern paper because it just reminded me of the Scooby-Doo from back in the day, the little bat dies from Lawn Fawn that I cut out of black cardstock, and an ink blended panel with my distressed ink, a little bit of bling. So such a nice little card. This turned out really, really great. I love it. And then this one here. This is our spooky car. We've got some spiders and some bats, a little bit of bling. And the best part is everything is, it's dimension, but it's flat dimension. So you can, everything's kind of raised, but not really. And then an ink blended panel on top of the card base with, again, my distressed inks and a new stamp to me, the Hero Arts Spider Web that was an amazing find today. I'm super excited because that is not how this card was originally designed. And then the little spider webs 
that I were going to use on the that I was going to use on the front, those ended up on the inside, and I just think that that is so fun. So I think for today, you know, I think this purple one is going to be my favorite for today. I have been thinking about this one for weeks, and it's just been in my mind over and over and over. So this turned out exactly like I planned. This one definitely took a turn for the better. Okay, well that is all for the card projects today. I will be linking the file down in the description as well as listing all of the supplies that I used to make these cards. If you uh, found this fun, inspiring at all, go ahead and hit that like button. I would love to have you as a subscriber if you are not already subscribed. And until I see you in the uh, next video, don't forget to share this video with your crafty friends. Check out some more of my Halloween and fall craft videos, and I will see you next time. So until then, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day, and as always, happy crafting.